All righty, guys. Welcome back. We've got the final episode of the year, the old League of Inches, and um, we've got a couple of the, the gang together. Couldn't get all five. One decided to have an early holiday, um, but uh, we've got the rest of us and um, here to have a bit of a chat about some rules that have come in and um, a couple of the key signings that have happened uh, to date, which obviously there's a few more still to come, but I uh, thought we'd have a chat about it leading into the, the new season and the new year. Uh, 2020 was quite an interesting year to say the least so um good to sort of get towards the end of it and and sort of kick it goodbye but hats off look honestly i've got nothing to do a hats off with i'm missing the footy i'm over it i'm over not having any footy to watch each week um where can we put something on please i'm, I'm over it i'll give it an us 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 and I'm, I'm dead set over the footy so bring the footy back please the cricket's just not doing it for me this year and um just please, uh, Sid, take it away. I, I just I need to cool down for a second. Got any thoughts and, about that? Oh yeah, man. Uh, it's the moment the grand final, like the, the game peaks in terms of uh, excitement, whatever else. The pinnacle is the grand final, and you, you know you're up here in terms of excitement. You know whether you're a neutral or a fan, um, and then and then just like that, it's all gone. Um, usually we have. A little bit of internationals. There's no internationals this year for obvious reasons. Uh, thanks for nothing, coronavirus. And um, but I'm with you. It's a, it's going to be a longer preseason, and we just have to we just have to wait it out now and put up with boring cricket, in my opinion. But anyway. Yeah. Well, look, I'll quickly throw it to someone who's used to disappointing people, i.e., his misses. Uh, and, and Dane, <laughs> how are you feeling with the current situation? Are you been walking around? almost getting in brawls with people, you're that, that over it. Yeah, look, it's really disappointing. I, I turn on Foxtel and, you know, all that's on is the darts or snooker. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, you know, even the Formula One, that's finished. You know, it's, yeah, it's pretty, pretty boring, to be honest. So I can't wait for the footy to come back. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it coming back, to be honest. But, um, yeah, there's just nothing on. Just watching Santa Claus and you know all the all the terrible Christmas shows that are on, and I'm really just over it. Oh, it's always quality to have you in the show. So um, I'm sure the viewers have missed you, and it's good to see Jason's obviously had a bit of time with his background. He's got ahead of the signings thread, um, and he's obviously ready to go to having a chat about the signings. And how's your last couple of weeks been, Jace? You obviously missed it as well. Yeah, good. Um, like say it said, like. Once the grand final hits, you it sort of just dies away and then uh, it slowly disappears. Like this year, we were very lucky. We got three weeks of origin back to back to back to back. So it sort of carried that excitement for a little bit longer. But then that was done. And now, you know, um, I don't mind the cricket too much, especially the 2020s. They're exciting to watch. But, um, mate, Dane, I agree with you. Darts isn't a sport, personally. That shouldn't even be on a box. Um, so, just, uh, it's, it's not too bad, it's only what, just over a month, end of January, the trials start again, so, yeah, just a bit more, a bit over a month to go, and we'll be sweet. Yeah, well, we'll see what happens in regards to the, the 2020 Thunder Nation, so let's go green. Um, but we want to firstly talk about the rules. Um, before we put in a rule that we'd like to see introduced, I actually just want to quickly chat about the rules that were put into place um, at the start of this week, really. Um, I think most of us <laughs> were scratching our heads at pretty much all of these rules, but maybe one or two. I just wanted to quickly run through them for people who haven't heard, but there's a two points for field goals outside the 40 metres. So uh, whatever the go is there, there's a six again for... 10 metre infringements. There's a play the ball restart, replacing scrums when the ball's taken out, which is just sort of just quicken the game up. And really, if you're going to do that, just get rid of scrums altogether because there's no point in having a scrum these days. So um, the captain's challenge, if inconclusive, when reviewed by the bunker, the challenge will be retained. So I just thought that was pretty much should be just normal, normal play. So um, reviews, if... The referee believes a try has been scored. Uh, the, the, he will award it and the bunker will review in the background. So like what happened in the... I think they trialled that this year with one of the last <laughs> games and it seemed to go fairly fairly well. So um, again, we've got technology. You may as well just use it. Um, and the one that I actually do like is if a trainer asks the game to be stopped, 
that the player must be interchanged or taken from the field for a period of at least two minutes, which I actually think is probably the best rule out of all those is because people are just slowing down the play for no reason and um, getting away with it by slowing down for two minutes, having a breather. Um, Sid, I know you're um, nodding your head and shaking your head at most of them. What's your thoughts on these rules? Yeah, so I'll work backwards if you like. Um, the, definitely that, that one with the trainer and stopping the game uh, for, you know, for a broken finger now. It's, uh, now they have to go off. It was similar to uh, a few years back when blokes were lying down for what they thought might have been a high tackle to try and get a penalty. Now, if you lie down after a, what you think might be a high tackle, you go off in the potentially 15 minutes for the HIA. So blokes aren't doing it so much, you know. Um, it's the same same sort of concept. I applaud that one. Um, there was one or two others I, I like. I don't like the field goal one. I think it's messing with the points of the game, even though it is the least used uh, method of scoring points. I think it's it's a big risk. I I don't I don't see it in terms of the return. Um, it's just not worth it. I, I thought they should have just left it. I shouldn't have even been even been on the table in, in my opinion. I don't see the benefit of it. As far as the penalties uh, for six, for ten meters, something really really uh, important that needs to be addressed. Uh, we talk about faster game, faster game, faster game, but refs going backwards for more and more and more of the game. There's going to be issues, injuries, or even worse. I think it wouldn't surprise me if a, a ref has a heart attack. Mate. They just want faster and faster. They expect these guys to get all the calls right, and they want them to just make calls on the run, going backwards, mind you. You know, um, the, the the penalties. I think the balance was about right, apart from the grand final. Um, it was it was it was good, and they should leave it. And the other thing is, keep changing the rules on these refs. They're going to confuse it every year. There's new rules. It needs to be conscious. They just need to leave it, touch it, let these guys get five tears under the belt, and not exaggerating. Uh, and, and then you'll see the refereeing quality improve. But so far, year in year out, they keep mucking it around. Um, so a real mixed bag. Not not happy for most for the most part with this stuff. Yeah, I think you're pretty spot on with that um, wrap up. Which um, couldn't have said it probably better myself. Just on say the field goal. Well, and I feel like it's going to be another one of those sort of the 2040 rules where they've introduced this new rule this year, the 2040, no one kicked one. So um, I think the field goal is going to be the same thing. I don't think anyone's going to hit a, a 40 metre field goal. That's asking quite a bit of your kickers. So I know Benji did it a few years ago, but it's a different story these days. Dane, what are you making of it? Um, are you for these changes for mine? I think it's starting to overcomplicate the game. I think the game's best when it's simple. Um, what, are your, what are you making of it? Yeah, look, I think they should only introduce a couple of rules at a time uh, at the start of each season or prior to each season commencing. Um, I really do like the the trainer rule um, where the player has to get taken off for, you know, at least two minutes because you see these players towards the end of the game they're, and they're faking cramps and really just sort of slowing the game down, giving their, their team a bit of a breather. So I, I actually quite like that rule as well. Um, I don't, I don't see anyone kicking any field goals from 40 metres out unless you're Breck Finch. Um, yeah, look, they are, they are looking to make, a, make the game a lot faster. I do like the play the ball restart um, if a player is taken out on the sideline or in a touch. Um, but I, I think only that rule and, and the, um, the other one with the trainer taking the player off for two minutes, I think they should be the only ones. The other ones are just... Yeah, I, I don't really see any any point in them, to be honest. Yeah, I can't agree with you more. And Jace, what's your final words on this matter? Um, uh, the the field goal thing, like it, it's um, yes and no. Like I do agree with with <laughs> Sid and um and yourself, and you know the, the with the two points. You know, no one kicks it anyway. Dane said that as well. No one's going to kick them. But at the end of the day, you get close to the end of the game and you've got a lot of players fishing for that penalty to get the two points whereas this sort of like takes it out of the referee's hands and sort of lets the players you know determine their own fate with a 40 you know if they set up for it on the 40 instead of you know trying to fish for that penalty stay down you know whatever it is flop around um 
I think that in that sense, it's it's a good thing. Um, for me, I think they they're trying to speed the game up too much. At the end of the day, these guys are human beings. They're not robots. They're just the human body can only take so much before it gives out. And um, you know, tactically playing footy late in the game, you're always looking for that sideline to slow it down, get a scrum, give your forwards a break. Taking that scrum out of play now, it's just going to be non-stop. So something big is going to happen. Something uh, something big and something bad will happen injury-wise. You know, fingers crossed, not on wood. It isn't a heart attack to a player on the field. Yeah, I think you, you snuck on there. And I think that the one thing that these rules will do as well is that they're, they're basically trying to make extinct the, the big player, the, the big bopper, which... The game was pretty much renowned for having for, for years and years having a good big bopper in your team. But these days with these rules and that, he's going to get found out very quickly. And unless you're someone like a junior Paula who can actually has a bit of a step on him and, and things like that, you're, pay, you're, you're basically going to get found out. So it's going to be an interesting year um, with these new rules and how they do go ahead and do it. Um, but now, look, one thing I know Sid's wanted to do for an age on this show, and we've all seen the chat and, he brings it up almost weekly. He wants everyone to put a rule down that we'd like to have introduced to the game. And I'll let the master himself um, start with this, please. Okay. All right, look, I, ha- I have three, but for the sake of uh, time, I just thought I'm going to pick the one, the one rule. And I think you guys will agree. Um, I'm interested to see all your opinions because, you know, you've all played it in different ways and you all love the game. Um, so... The, the scenario is if a player, if a de- defender's going in for a tackle around the waist area and the attackers are doing their draw and pass, right? They're spreading it, yeah? Then he goes around and his arm hits the ball and it goes anywhere. So his head is on one side of the guy's hip, the ball's on this side and he hits his arm, yeah? What happens? Six more. Six, six to go. Why? My solution is that's ridiculous. So what the, the reason they did it actually, because I read about this, the reason they made that rule was to make it easier for the refs, okay? Easier for the refs to make a decision. Did he play out or did he not? The solution is, if it's the fourth tackle for the attacking team and it gets hit, they run back and dive on it, they get another fourth. That's it. It stays the fourth. If it's the last, if it's the third or the last, it stays. You just, just one, not six more. Mm-hmm. And same with the charge downs as well. So same thing applies. You do a charge down, you all this effort to try and put pressure on the kick but not hit the ball because you'll give him six more, right, is resulting in guys diving at legs and it's, it's creating a dangerous situation and the NRL's at fault for that, okay? So they go for a charge down in my, in my scenario, my ideal, if you hit the ball, great. So they're going for the ball. They're not diving at the legs anymore. It will be one more. So if it was the last, it will stay the last. If it's the fourth, it will stay the fourth. Do you get me? Oh, we get ya. Um, can we just have a, a thumbs up or thumbs down for that rule, please, um, boys? I'm going to go... Saying? I'm going to go... I'll give you an up. I'll give you an up, I guess. <laughs> okay, well, I'd like to hear you too. What it's was that? Maybe something I haven't thought of. Okay. Yeah, well, I'd, Dane... I'd like Dane yeah. My opinions about it, I think... Yeah. I think it's a, a good rule. Uh, the only thing... <laughs> You can get a very what that's one of those rules where the referee can have a in a discretion about how he feels. So one referee might say he's played at it or hasn't played at it, where one might say he does. So <clears throat> it just introduces a lot of fifty fifty for one. But what happens is there's no decision. It's just if it hits, okay. It's it's four it stays the four. You know, the ball's in uh, or whatever, they can make up another word. You see? What yeah. you're referring to is before they did what they do now where no matter what happens, he hits the player, or he played at it. The guy's going in for a tackle, he can't even see the ball. And all you have he's, to do is an attack, you just throw it into his arm. He's fired up tonight. I love it, Sid, tonight. He's, he was held back last night, and he's back with a vengeance. So I love to keep going on about this with you, mate, but we've still got half a show to go. So, uh, Dane, you got one for us? Dane, I want to hear what Dane, Jason and Dane think about yeah, that. All right. I haven't heard much. Oh, uh, look from my from mine. I think um, if a player is playing at a ball or, or they're going for a charge down, as far as I'm concerned, they're playing at the ball. 
But I think it, it really comes down to what the ref sees. Um, you see them playing at the ball, they're, they're playing at the ball. I mean, it's, yeah, it's a bit of a, bit of a grey area. Um, but I agree, but I kind of disagree at the same time. But I'm going it's to kind agree of... tonight for Sid. I, look, I agree. I think it's a great concept. But then, you know, what do you do for the players that, you know, they got two and one down the blind and that guy's looking to knock that ball down on purpose? You know what I yeah. mean? It's the, like Dane said, it's, it's a bit of a grey area. And then that comes down to Rev's interpretation as well when that blows the game out. They, they're horrible as it is at the moment. Trying to get a simple, you know, call, go the right way. But um, no, I like it. It's a good idea. It's a great concept. I think you have to sort of hash out those little, you know, question marks in it to you. It'll be sweet, I reckon. Uh, I'll try and book in with an interview with the great man, the CEO, soon, Sid, uh, on behalf of League Unlimited, uh, League, League of Inches. Thank you. Jace, have you got um, a rule for us? Yeah, I think um, uh, I, I would like to see if, if it goes down to Golden Point. Um, I, I think I'd like to see it, you know, similar to Oztag, you have a drop off straight away. I think that way it's a, a try is more likely rather than, you know, work for a field goal. Then you've got a bit more space on the field, whether you drop it down to uh, 11 on 11, they take two off or even 10 on 10. Uh, it creates a bit more space and then you've got them, the guys using the ball actually trying to score that try because they know they can get an overlap. I like that. that I'm going to give that a thumbs up. I'm giving that a big thumbs up. What about you boys? I reckon that's it. <laughs> We've got a fourth. We've got a fourth. Um, boys, what do, you make of, what do you make of that? <laughs> I think that's brilliant. Yeah, I, I like it. I mean, people come to watch footy to see tries. They don't come to footy to watch field goals, do they? No. I mean, you want no, that, you go and watch Union. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, I, like no, I, I agree. Um, Dane, what about yourself? What do you got? Yeah, well, look, I'm going to do a sit. I've got two. Um, <laughs> the first one is one of my pet hates. When, when, a, when, a, when a half or, or a player in general is kicking for touch off a penalty, I want to see like what they do in soccer and, and the referee pull out a little white tin of um, a spray can with white paint in it and he marks the spot where they've got to kick from because they always run over it by about five metres at least. And it's one of my pet hates. So that one quickly. <laughs> that that, re that really, really annoys me. It really, really bugs me. And the, the, the main rule that I would introduce would be the charge down on the on the halves when they're making a kick on tackle four or tackle five and making contact with the halves. I think some of them are just so overboard and I think they should be, should be penalised and I think you should not be allowed to make contact with a, a ball player that is, you know, making a kick in play. Okay. I like that. That's a good one. Um, boys, what do you reckon? I'm going to give you a thumbs up. I reckon we should all be going to the NRL with this. I, I, I'm, I'm loving it. NRL, um, NRL HQ, watch out. We're coming. <laughs> Dane and Sid are fired up. They, they're coming. And me and Jace will just be behind us like, yeah, we'll let them boys go. We'll, we'll, we'll be fine. I reckon my rule... <laughs> my rule... Uh, I'm actually going to just be pretty simple. I want to keep the game simple as possible. I actually would like to see the game go down to four interchanges. Um, I know people talk about six, but I'd actually go to four. I'd introduce some specialised bench players um, because the reason why I'm going to go to four is because the amount of people that now come off with a HIA is about three or four a game. So they're already getting three or four free interchanges. You get to about the 60th minute mark and teams are having four interchanges left up their, their belt at the moment. So for mine with the game trying to quicken itself up and, I guess, take the big men away and things like that. This is a way you can keep a big man in, but you just create a fatigue factor. You don't necessarily create um, a risk of injuries with how quick the game is getting. So uh, I don't know what you boys think of that one, but I'd like to yeah, reduce the interchange. I like it. Yeah. I, do, I do like it, but like you said, they're sort of taking the big boppers out of the game. And with that, they're definitely going to have to wipe the big boppers off the, you know, face of the park with that rule, and maybe, maybe like with that instead, just the HIA, uh, HIAs, um, 
just they become interchanges. So instead of people, you know, going down on that, they just count as an interchange. Yeah. Yeah, all right. Just take my rule and, and make it better. That's all right. We're here to here to chat about that. So, uh, look, move on from the, from the rules for now. We'll probably come back to that one because I think that's opened up a good can of worms there, Sid. So I think we might have another episode where we touch on some rules again. So, um, finally, you, you sh- last, yeah, just mate. one last thing on, on your one. It's worth mentioning. Um, the NRL's already talking about going to six with possibly two substitutes. So you have okay. your six interchanges. If you have injuries, you have two substitutes. Permanent, you know, like soccer. They swap and then the other bloke doesn't come back on. Um, so that's what they're looking at at the moment. Is that a, a is this a bloody League of Inches exclusive? I think it is. Uh, they well, said he had it exclusive, but uh, I delivered already for him. <laughs> don't, don't, steal, don't steal me, Limelight, because we're going into now... The, the signing section, and I'm going to throw straight to Dane. He reckons he's got an actual um, League of Inches exclusive. Everyone, this is no joke. I thought it was, but he's, it's no joke. Um, Mr. Dane Cunningham, what do you got? Yeah, so look, I've got a bit of inside information. It's, it is big news. You probably all know who I'm going to be talking about when I mention this. Um, big signing on the Gold Coast. Um, Joel Johnston has just signed for the Coomera Koalas on the wing. Oh, Massive news. Back in league. Is, this, is, this is huge. <laughs> Look, he's beside himself. He's I got red you... covered and everything. He is a superstar and everyone's been, you know, gunning for his signature. This is, oh. yeah, it's, it's massive. Look, oh, it's actually... Oh, yeah. It's huge, guys. I actually... <laughs> Lucrative deal, uh, pie in a six pack per game. I actually That's thought. Do you have to about your contract at all, or it's that oh, hush hush? It's all everything hush hush at the moment, but I actually thought he was legit and he's done a stitch up galore. Come on, Joel. <laughs> and the, the thing is, is that yes, I've signed, I've signed a contract, and I'll be playing, I'm coming out of retirement to play a league next year with, with some mates, just playing a low div free comp. Uh, for, for the Coomera Cutters, though, not the Coomera Koalas. So, uh, oh, sorry, but, I thought it was the Koalas, mate. No, no, yeah, unlucky. But um, I want to move on and quickly talk about some signs. You don't have long to go, and this video is going to get turned off. So um, I want to quickly talk about Flanagan signing. So Kyle Flanagan from the Roosters to the Dogs. Um, I actually think, obviously, Jason's a, a Dogs man. So... Um, I think just quickly, I have about 30 seconds a minute on each of these signings, but I thought it's a good signing for the dogs because I think Flanagan needs to get out of that pressured environment and the dogs have no expectations. Um, as a dogs fan, Jace, what did you think when you first signed Flanagan and what are you thinking now? I think it's a great uh, great signing. I think he's, he's going to be able to own the team himself and be able to just run the show instead of, you know, kind of at the Roosters, he was sort of playing second fiddle to, to Kiri. So now it's it's a team of his own, and I think you're going to really see him shine now. 100%. And just quickly, Dana, you're a Roosters man. Um, were you disappointed losing him? Yeah, huge loss. I think he's a great game for, um, for the Dogs. I think they're going to build a team around him, being such a young player. He's a goal kicker. He was leading the point scoring at, through most of the season, and he's a huge loss and a great game for the dogs. I reckon he's, I reckon he's going to do well, and I hope he does for the dogs. 100%. Um, next, I've got, um, obviously, David Fafita, Broncos to the Titans, which was uh, a massive signing um, that was spoken about. Um, Sid, I'll go to you, just and, mate, please be quick. Thank you. Uh, we know what you're like, but um, what do you make of this signing? I obviously think it's a great signing for the Titans and their forward pack looks unbelievable next year uh, for young talent. What are you making of it? I, I could see um, a premiership for the Titans in the next 10 years with this guy. I said it before and I'll say it again. He's the next Gordon Talis, Raging Bull 2.0. Mate, super, super talent. He's still so young. Excellent signing. Excellent. Absolute freak. I'm going to throw it back to you, actually, for this one because I know this is a guy you love, Harry Grant. I consider this a signing because he did come back after a year from loan from the Tigers, but obviously back to the Storm to fill in Cameron Smith's boots, which I'm saying is either gone to the Titans or will retire. So um, what do you make of the Grants um, come back to the Storm? 
Yeah, well, um, with uh, Bellamy there and the system that they have, um, you know, we thought, I don't know how uh, they're going to be able to recover from losing Cameron Smith. Cameron Smith is gone. He's moved his family up there. The kids are looking at um, schools already. So it's done. He's, uh, he's moving to Queensland. Um, he's already bought a property as well. Um, so, you know, Harry Grant is the next big thing. We've banged, we've banged on about him quite a few times. He's, 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 just, he's just a super, super hooker and a hybrid of, you know, the last 20 years of, of, of some of the best hookers going around. Quality. Again, outstanding for him. And I'm glad everyone can't see the bottom of Sid right now because he's very, very excited. So, um, <laughs> Dane, I want to go to you. <laughs> Tyson Rizal. I want to keep Sid quiet on this one, but he's gone from his beloved Dragons to the Knights. I actually think this is a pretty good signing. They didn't have much in the second rowing department, the Knights, but they've now got a bit of strike. Yeah, look, I think he's going to be a huge asset to, to the Knights and really set the platform for the, um, for the halves. Um, he, he's a great player. You know, he's played a lot of representative football and um, he's, yeah, he's just a solid all-round player and yeah, he's going to be a really good asset for, for the Knights and um, you know, they're probably paying overs for him but um, I think he's worth it and yeah, I'm excited to see how he goes in, in new colours next year 100% and I know Sid's still a bit, bit angry that he's lost him so um, I'm going to go to Jason with this one, I've got two signings here for the one club, I've got Ben Murdoch Masilla and Aiden Fanoa Blake for the Warriors. So two big boppers. I just spoke about the new rules. And I've got this one as a 50-50 because obviously they're both good players. But depending on their rules, you don't want to have too many big boppers in your team. Um, we just don't know what's going to happen. So <laughs> what are you quickly making of this, this signing for the Warriors? Um, mate, they, were, they had a pretty gun you know, board pack already, I think. I, um, two big boppers, great go forward. You know, Murdoch was still coming back to the NRL. Uh, being over in um, England in the Super League, I think he's he's gained a lot of experience. You know, refined his game. He's going to come back and he's going to shine here as well. And Fanua Blake, uh, one of the best forwards in the game. If they can keep him fit, if they can keep get them both fit during this preseason, I think they'll kill it. You know, um, still you know, the interchanges, keeping them the way they are, or even going down to six, you wouldn't worry them too much if they can get them fit. Firing. I think it's it's a good good signing for both uh, both guys. What they'll definitely instill is they'll instill that mean Warriors um, feel back into that camp. So and that's what they've been missing for quite a few years, if you ask me. Um, another one I've got has got Bryce Cartwright. Obviously, the Titans to the Eels. Um, I originally laughed at this when it happened, and I thought it was a joke. Um, his form has obviously been atrocious, but the more I think about it, the more I'm a bit pessimistic about it. I guess I think. It's on a very cheap contract, and I was, look, if you can get something out of him, then a bonus, but I don't really expect too much happening from Cartwright. He's more of a depth signing than anything for us, so um, pretty much just, just move on from him. Um, and Sid, last one for you is Jack Bird. Obviously, Broncos to, to your club, the Dragons. Um, look, obviously, depending on the money that, that, that you bought him for, a very risky signing with, in terms of injuries. He hasn't had a Great run, unfortunately, but what are you making um, as a Dragons man? Look, I'm optimistic. Um, you know, as far as the money goes, we're paying for half his contract, which is a mammoth 975000 uh, So the Broncos are paying a fair chunk for potentially is a top talent if he can stay on the park. Um, now, the optimism I, that I hold is uh, without revealing too much of his personal life, which I don't think is fair, um, but he's got a medical condition um, uh, that requires uh, ongoing uh, monitoring and management. Um, and he was at his best at the Dragons and at the Sharks because, uh, um, you know, New St. George Hospital, there's a specialist there that, that can handle the situation. Um, whether there was, I don't know what went on at Broncos and why he had so many injuries, but I suspect he'd be much better. From all reports, he's already... Um, been really, really uh, good at training. Um, he's leading every every drill. He's coming first, which is which is really good. I'm I'm hopeful for the guy. I don't think he was a he, he was a bad guy. He wasn't a you know um, uh, uh, like one of those big talkers. He just, just you know if somebody offers you big money, you take it. Doesn't mean he's got a big head or whatever. I don't know what you're laughing about, but I'm optimistic. Okay, and and McGregor's gone. 
<laughs> Thanks, Coach Sid. Uh, and I guess the last signing, actually, that I want to quickly talk about is another League of Inches exclusive. Uh, it's Sid Francis. Uh, there's, there's potential uh, at the moment that he's out of, le- out of the, the team. He's going to be out of um, League of Inches at this rate with some of his behaviour recently. Um, but that, that's all talk. There's No one actually wants him at the moment, so he's still carrying a bit of the chunk of the salary cap. I can't offload him. Um, but at the moment, uh, there's talk on the table. If anyone wants him, um, please, taking, off, taking offers at the moment. Uh, but anyway, boys... Um, that's us. That's us for the year. Um, we've got about a minute to go on this video. So just a quick shout out from each of you. Jace, how, how are you feeling about the off season and big Chrissy plans? Uh, yeah, good. Uh, my partner actually lives up in, um, in Brisbane, Beanley area. So I'm oh, going to yeah? be up there for Christmas and spending uh, Christmas and New Year's with her. So shout out to my partner, Hannah. So see her soon. Well, give me and Dana Hoy when you're up here because we live about 10, 15 minutes from there. So good to catch up for a beer or something, brother. Um, Danny boy, uh, just something quick from you. <laughs> yeah, oh, look, there's not much to do in the off-season except play golf with, with you, you clown. <laughs> um, and over Christmas, I'm going to head back to Sydney, see some family and friends, and I'm going to catch up with Jason. Apparently, yeah, so um, he's, yeah, he's coming yeah, nice. into our hood. <laughs> um, well, I'm on a four-game winning streak, by the way, against Dan in golf. But anyhow, we'll quickly move on. Sid, you've got about 10 Cut seconds. Out. So out. <laughs> <laughs> you've got 10 seconds, Sid. Take it away. No, look, I just want to wish everyone a Merry Christmas and safe, uh, safe festive season and uh, all the best for the new year and good luck for your teams. It's perfect. Yeah, beautiful. Well, Perfect. So just quickly, just thanks to everyone who's followed this year. There's bigger and better things coming up next year. Um, but thanks to everyone following League of Inches and have a good Christmas and stay safe for the new year. See you guys.